I'm Catherine Sampson, and in the fifth in our series, where we analyze what makes an outstanding piece of graphic design, we're going to look at one of the most recognizable maps in the world, the London Underground Map, first designed by Harry Beck. The tube map is a London icon. Technically, it's not really a map, but a diagram, as it doesn't reflect the real geography of London, but its clear color-coded lines and friendly curves shape the way most Londoners visualize the capital. The map wasn't always so accessible. As the independent railways of the 1800s merged into a single system, the first map, published in 1908, looked like this. It was, self-evidently, a bit of a mess. The map showed all the most important central stations, but it didn't make it easy to find your way around. Station names had to be written in small text, often at odd angles, so they could be crammed in between awkwardly twisting lines. In 1926, a map maker named Fred Stingemore set out to improve matters by regularizing the spacing around the stations and allowing himself more artistic license with the roots of the various lines. The result was a map that no longer represented the true shape of London and thus couldn't be superimposed on a street map as earlier attempts had been, but it did allow more stations to be represented with larger text. The man who created the tube map we know today was Harry Beck. Formerly an engineering draftsman for London Underground, he lost his job in the late 1920s as a result of funding cuts. But Beck retained an interest in London's transport system and with time on his hands, set about on a project to tidy up the tube map by, as he would later recall, straightening the lines, experimenting with diagonals and evening out the distance between stations. In the process of preparing the map for publication, a few adjustments were made. Stations without interchanges were now shown with ticks instead of circles, which helped give the map more white space. Originally distributed in 1933 as a folding pocket card, Beck's map was a clear hit. The original print run of 750,000 was snapped up in the month, requiring a further 100,000 to be printed almost immediately. The handwritten type in Beck's original map evolved in the next few iterations to incorporate Johnston, the typeface that was designed for London Underground by Edward Johnston in 1916. It is still used by London Transport and has only seen minor adjustments, including developing a range of weights. I think the typeface's success is due to its high level of legibility, but it also has a beauty and a simplicity. A hundred year process of evolution leads from Harry Beck's first map to the diagram we know today. Perhaps the biggest change has been the addition of extra services. The Jubilee line opened in 1979 with a major extension completed in 1999. 112 London Overground stations are shown too, along with 45 DLR stations. Add in tram and riverboat services, along with the forthcoming Elizabeth line, and that's around twice as many stations and connections as the first tube map. Harry Beck died in 1974, but his pioneering work in making sense of London to residents and travellers alike lives on.